Jean Roberts, not many people in this country know who Jean was, and yet she played a very large part. Uh, first, you can just tell us who she was and then well, what she, was she a, did for Well, she was a fantastic. She started off as a stage manager, I think at the old Vic, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or the young Vic, uh, when there were two companies there. And she came over with her partner, Marigold Charlesworth, to, I think she first started in Calgary, where she tried to start uh, a professional theatre company in the 50s. Very hard to do that. Wow. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that happened or what that was about. Um, then uh, she began, she got herself connected with the Canadian players, and I think was their general manager when I arrived. So she knew me from my very first job. In fact, I remember making up at the old Orange Hall here, which used to be on King Street, Queen Street. Uh, it, it was torn down now, but we, we did a we did a preview or something before my first tour, Julius Caesar and stuff, and Canadian players. And I remember making up, and somebody next to me had said, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll get uh, we'll get overtime between Timmins and somewhere else. It'll be terrific." And I went, "Oh, overtime! How much do we get for that? That'll be great." And I'm making up, and I hear this voice behind me. I can't do the Scots accent. "You're a young actor. Let me never hear you talking about overtime again." And I went, oh my God, she only heard that. That was Jean Roberts. She wanted you to be absolutely focused on what you were doing, on creating art. And luckily, she was bilingual, because she was brought up in a convent in Brussels. And uh, she, after the Canadian players, she went to the Canada Council, and she turned the Canadian players, when it stopped being a, um, a touring company, she, she did a little company at the library theatre here in what was the old library, which is right. now the U of T library, or bookshop. And um, she ran that for a time. Interesting work brought in. N.F. Simpson, odd stuff she, she programmed. Good actors, I remember. And uh, then the Canada Council, she went to the Canada Council as head of the theatre, and because she spoke French uh, beautifully as well, the two were together at a wonderful time when things were happening all over the place. Trump we're in the 1960s. We're, we're in the late 60s and the early 70s. Yeah. Uh, mid, mid to late 60s, early 70s. And uh, then after that she took over as head of the theatre at the, at the NAC. And again, because she could do both French and English, she was, it was very important trying to establish those first early companies or what they were to bring in. And, after, after the NAC, what did Jean do? I, I can't remember. But she was so important in that she was given, when she was at the Canada Council, she was given uh, a little bit of leeway, which you don't get nowadays with juries and having to go to this and with this. People are so frightened that they'll give money to the wrong people. But she was able to give us 30,000. You know, I- You asked for it? Yes, I called her up and said, look, I think we desperately need this money to start this company, this, 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 and this. And she said, well, let me get back to you. And a week later, she called and said, we've found some money for you. So 30,000 in 1970? 120,000 today, 150. It was a lot of money. It was a lot of money. And it, she took a gamble. She was able to take a gamble. And it worked. So again, we're back to gambling and risk, and when you yes. remove that from either the creation or what happens on stage or the way that uh, things are handed out, either f uh, you know, support from a bank or support from a, a government council, when you remove that, something drains. Yes, you don't get the excitement. We're, we're, we're missing a large chunk of excitement. And it may become, because we're relying on, on raising money in the community a little bit, because I remember I did a play uh, at, in Vancouver called Queer Sights. Uh, Frank McEnany could have been a great playwright. Uh, this was a story about a young man who dragged a player piano across the Chilkoot Pass into, into Dawson City. It's a wonderful, wonderful play it was. It didn't quite work, but it, had, it was full of the most interesting things. Well, uh, somebody from Macmillan Blodell decided that they hated it and hated having Canadian, you know, plays thrust down their throat, as they said, and we're taking away our $10,000 that we give you every year. So you get a, a bit of that. You have to be careful. Last question. Hmm. 
a young person uh, is, is from Thunder Bay or Fort St. George said, uh, I want to be a very, very good actor and I'm just coming out of high school. Where should I go? What should I do? What should be my tools? Well, the first thing you've got to know is, c c have you got the real talent? Are, are you born with the talent? Because you are born with talent. But let's say that he's got the talent, this kid, say, or, or girl, and then you need training. I, I think the best training is actually to go to university and, and take a, a degree in something other than acting or theater. Do, do it in something that you love. Well, you were a physicist, weren't you, to begin with? And uh, I t took archaeology and thought that I was going to be a writer and, you know, studied that kind of thing. Um, but it gave me a general education, which you absolutely have to have. Mm. You, you will occasionally do, if you're the young person, old plays. You must know how to look at old plays, how to do the research, how to bring this old piece written by George Bernard Shaw or William Shakespeare forward so that it is relevant to the moment of my back putting down 60 bucks to watch you doing this play, you have to have done the research and the work so that you brought this piece forward to me now and that it's relevant. So you need, a, you need to be able to think. And all that universities do, good ones, is teach you how to think and how to find information. And if you've done that and still feel that you want to act, then maybe you should take a, a, you know, a year or two years somewhere to get the craft. I didn't have craft, you see. Until I got to Stratford and had found a voice teacher, I perhaps was doing damage to my voice. Um, I didn't know how to fence until Paddy Crane taught me how to fence. I, my movement was always a bit um, too much stiff in the shoulders and stuff, which I could have got rid of at the theater mm -hmm. school. They would have taught me ways to do it. I had to learn on the job. So, I'd say go to a good school for two years. It takes time. It's going, to take, it's going to take time, but that's what you need to do. Then you can hit the world with your talent, and you'll have some craft and some ideas. Yes. Because it's, it's a bit sad sometimes when I'd sit somebody down after they'd done a nice audition piece, and I know they were nervous, and I know they were from doing the piece, and they were nervous with me, but sometimes there wasn't anything in their heads, you know? You, they, there wasn't anything. They weren't reading the newspaper. And you have to. I'm sorry, if you want to do a, you want to be involved in an art form which uses time as your media, you better understand what's happening in your own time. Otherwise, what the hell? Is it only us who think the actors that are most interesting to me are the actors who are actually engaged, not only wonderfully in their craft, but much deeper in the world? Whether I'm talking about a Judy Dench or a Susan Sarandon, look at Susan Sarandon, there is someone who's fully engaged. Is it just me or you that thinks that that is a, a more intense and interesting talent when I see them on the screen? No, we're not alone in, in thinking these things. Um, and it does, the, the engagement in the world, I, I really do think has a, influences what happens, but you do get geniuses like John Gielgud, who really were interested in the theater, except that when you read the letters, he was interested in a lot of things. People talk about him as being, his great interest was the theater and how it was done, but he was always talking about other things in his letters. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Robert. It was wonderful. <laughs> that was good chat. <laughs>